Hello everyone and welcome back to the Shovel of Hope Any% Percent Guide. Today's video is probably going to be uh, much longer than any of the previous episodes, and that's because we'll be covering not only the stage itself, which is fairly short, um, but does have some tricky moments in it, but we'll also be covering Boss Rush. Uh, before we get to Boss Rush, there is an update to this upcoming room. This is actually a much trickier version of the room, so if you want to see the easier way of getting through, uh, be sure to check on the second part of the video. This is not easy, so I wouldn't recommend it for beginners, but it is technically faster. Thankfully, the Mario Maker room is very easy to navigate through, so long as you have dust knuckles, so I just feel bad for the low percent runners. And then yet another reason to feel bad for anyone playing in low percent is this room. Because here in any percent, instead of having to actually use that ship and navigate, we can just fly over everything using the propeller dagger. So one of the last important things to know about the stage itself is the concept of how blocks and collision detection works in this game. If Shovel Knight happens to be in the wall in any way, shape, or form, if he happens to be in a solid object, the game doesn't immediately eject you. Throughout this auto-scroller, there will be plenty of stone and dirt blocks that will appear to block your way. The collision for anything off-screen isn't really in play. So toward the latter half of this auto-scroller, it'll make things a lot easier for you if you stay ahead of the auto-scroller, essentially. There will be a couple of areas that are guarded by plague rats, and those don't even load immediately either, so you'll want to kind of hang back just a little bit in those few spots. Wait for them to load, release a charge slash on them, wait for them to detonate, and then continue moving forward. But you can see even right now, I managed to get through some blocks without destroying them, and that's because I moved where they would be before they appeared. Again, clearing out the rats before they become an issue, and then getting on top of blocks that would normally be insurmountable because they physically stop you. It means that you can avoid dealing with the liquid samurais as well. Now about boss rush, I will actually be showing a decent clear of boss rush in this footage. It's not going to be the one that I want you all to study off of, but it's just to show what it's like when you're playing through boss rush, how you have to adapt to each fight coming in. This arena is not like every other boss's room, so you're going to see that everything sort of changes because of that. You'll also see for the majority of these kills that I'll be using the gear and the coin. I will show off some of the orb kills later on, but it's not really necessary because a lot of the boss rush fights are going to be repeats of what you saw on the stage. Polar Knight is guaranteed to be one of the first three, uh, so you'll want to try and stay left of center, at least for the start of the first couple of fights. Every boss technically has an ideal spot that you'd want to be standing in for them, but some bosses out-prioritize others. But with Plague and Polar gone, you saw that I didn't care to get quite towards the center of the room. That's because the remaining bosses are all actually just fine if you're to the right of center. You can see me executing the much harder quick kill in Boss Rush. I did flub it a little bit at the end, but I will be showing it off later on. For Treasure Knight, I kind of winged it, being honest, uh, and that's because you can't really get the same fight, not just because um, you're in the center of the room, which kind of changes dramatically how you start the fight, but also because he is far more likely to go to the ceiling, which there isn't actually a roof in this room. So you can't just pogo off of him repeatedly. And the same applies to King, which, uh, in my mistake, I tried to get toward the center of the room, um, but I didn't want to use a dagger if I had to. Uh, I'd rather conserve my magic a little bit. Um, but it did bite me a little bit because I wanted to be a little bit closer to the middle of the room for the king fight. One of the big changes for Spectre Knight, you'll notice that the floor is actually a little bit higher, so it changes the way we do the fight compared to the way we would do it in the stage. Instead of waiting for him in the opposite corner, we'll do some charge slashes in the top, and then we'll throw a projectile at him. Uh, and then we'll continue juggling him in the corner with charge slash and regular slashes, just because we have those upgrades now. Now you always kind of want Tinker last, uh, because that basically just guarantees something. It's that you can kill him with that gear a little bit faster, because you'll throw out the gear at the end of the previous fight. Um, if you don't know if he's going to be next or not, you can never tell when that's going to happen. Also, you can see that I screwed up a little bit on the Tinker fight. Uh, but again, you want to be able to recover and understand how to save any fight. It can be very demoralizing to get all the way to the end of boss rush and then die <laughs> and have to start all over again and it'll probably cost you about two minutes. So I'm just going to go ahead and remind everyone, always remember the best advice you can ever get for this game is practice boss rush, practice boss rush, practice boss rush. 
So that is uh, that is the Tower of Fate Ascent. You get a short, fairly difficult stage, followed by, depending on how comfortable you are, um, a very difficult boss rush if you want to go for the much more difficult strats, or if you want to go for slightly more laid-back strats. Some quick thoughts for the stage. If you don't like using the knuckle on that jellyfish, with reason, it's scary, you can always use the dagger instead. The easier way of getting through this room, as I mentioned earlier, involves instead taking the top rat. Well, you'll be daggering to this center block, jumping off of it, daggering to these conveyor belts, charge slash to kill the liquid samurai, and then approach this rat and make sure that you can pogo off of it, dagger again, pogo again, and then knuckle the dirt blocks to get across. The rats in the room are the particularly scariest part of this trick because if you just aren't paying attention, then they can easily knock you into lava or a bottomless pit, especially this one. Now for the bottom route, it's a lot trickier because you run a lot more risk of getting hit by stuff. So for example, with this rat, as I walk off, I'm not holding right, otherwise I will get hit and I won't be able to make it across this pit of lava. But if you don't hold right at all, you won't be able to clear the pit of lava without getting clipped by some of it. Start your dagger from the left side of this platform so that the slime samurai doesn't fall on you. Dagger over toward the gem, and then instead of pogoing off this rat, you're going to be knuckling through it, as we'll be staying slightly lower on this rat for a little bit longer. With the last mechanical rat, we'll be pogoing off of it twice, and then you'll be in a prime position to actually knuckle through the remaining dirt blocks on the top of the screen. So here's the harder version of the lava rat slime samurai room. Dagger below. Dagger from the left side, knuckle this rat, pogo, pogo, knuckle, knuckle, knuckle. The Mario Maker room is pretty easy, but at the very end there is a small trick. In order to break these blocks as quickly as possible, you actually have to delay the start of your pogo. So cancel your pogo with a swing, and then pogo very low so that you're actually getting your pogo to hit the dirt block and the slime. And this way you won't be spending twice as many times bouncing off of the slime to clear it before you can get out of this room. Now since the rest of the stuff in this stage is fairly straightforward, let's start talking about boss rush. Now one of the easiest things you can do when you're killing King Knight in boss rush is to swing Pogo Pogo into a charge slash, but if you want a slightly alternative way to finish the fight, you can do three swings into a Pogo for a charge slash on the second one instead of swing Pogo Pogo. Um, and that just makes it so that his health is perfectly rounded out for three charge slashes at the end. So the alternate fight with King Knight is swing Pogo Pogo, charge slash one, two, three Pogo, charge slash, swing Pogo Pogo, charge slash, charge slash, charge slash. Just as Polar is guaranteed to be one of the first three in Boss Rush, I will talk about him next. So, for the orbs, again, very similar kill to how you would do it in the stage. You'll just do two orbs as you approach him, four swings, wait for him to come back, charge slash, swings on him as he returns, take a damage boost off the snowball, charge slash into two more swings and he's dead. Now, unlike the stage, we have extra mana, so we'll actually be throwing a coin into this kill on Polar here. Be careful when you throw the coin, because you can actually destroy the mobile gear with the coin. Again, using left and right to be able to follow Polar all the way to the left side of the screen. If you do your hits properly, then as he lands, you should only have to swing at him seven more times to finish this fight. Remember to try and be left of center so that Polar will be on the right, which allows left right to work. Gear, jump, coin, charge slash, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, if you're looking for the easier way to practice propeller, you definitely want to be doing it in boss rush because, again, it's the same quick kill as in the stage. However, he's guaranteed to lunge at you for three sets instead of just the two. You don't even have to go chasing him off into the air. He's going to die after this last set of lunges. You'll get two more swings on him and finish him off. However, if you want a much harder fight, you can mix in the coin and some charge slashes. Know that when you throw the coin, it'll start his lunges, so make sure you're doing it on the way down so you can swing at him immediately. Do your regular set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then start a charge slash on the last one. Delay it to make sure that you're hitting him as he's holding his saber up. I found that it makes the timing easier so that you can hit him with a regular swing afterwards so that you're not getting hit by his last lunge. Coin and charge slash on propeller. Coin, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, charge slash, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, charge slash, 1, 2, 3. Now for Tinker, if you didn't like the coin intro in this stage, don't worry. You don't have a chance to even do it here in Boss Rush. So this is going to be a quote-unquote neither list kill, essentially. You're just using Knuckles and the gear. 
I will be changing up the ending ever so slightly because it matches up along Appleside's technique a little bit better. As you chase him, do three knuckles, pogo, one, two, three, four, pogo into charge slash for the finish, which also saves you a little bit of mana. Now, Mole Knight is basically the same, especially if you remember doing him with orbs. Uh, I won't be showing off the orb kill for that reason. However, with the coin and the gear, you'll be doing something slightly different here. After doing charge slashes into pogos for his last pass, you'll actually be throwing a coin, switching to the gear, and then once you land, you'll be hitting the gear to make sure it's active. A rolling gear deals a full heart of damage versus the enemy running into a stationary gear. Unfortunately, I missed my timing. However, you still can get the kill. Just do a charge slash into pogo. And then as you're coming back down, start another charge slash. If you can, hit this spark. Otherwise, charge slash directly at him and then pogo off his body for the kill. It's a good thing Mole is one of those kind of gift bosses that allows you to refill your health without too much difficulty. Just remember the finish, coin, gear, swing, charge slash, swing, pogo, charge slash, pogo. Now when it comes to Spectre, the largest difference between this and the fight that you do in the stage is that you'll be fighting him at the top of the screen instead of the bottom for the most part. Charge slash can hit from behind, so use it to send him into the corner more quickly. Use your projectile of choice. If you feel like throwing a gear out, go ahead. Just make sure that you activate it before he gets back. Charge slash as he returns while he's stationary, and then charge slash to open up this last set of juggles that keep him in the corner. He should go down pretty quick. Now, if you were paying attention, you might have noticed that, that gear actually didn't connect with Spectre. Uh, sometimes that happens, but in this footage, it will actually hit him. It just means that you'll need to take notice and adjust. In this case, it does hit him, so you can kill him just a little bit faster. If you find that Spectre is moving to the right at the start of the fight, it's because you're right of center. Charge slash swing, charge slash coin, gear, activate, charge slash swing, charge slash swing, one, two, one, two, three. Here's a little bonus so you can get to see where you would throw the orbs if that's what you were going to do. It's otherwise the exact same fight. Charge slash swing, charge slash two orbs, they'll both hit him on the way out and then you just finish the fight normally. Now, I'm going to talk about Plague Knight, and I need to stress that he is extremely frustrating to practice. Applesauce himself spent countless hours getting the footage that I'm providing with you guys. This is absolutely important if you want to do the most optimal kills, but there are some important takeaways for people who aren't looking to execute perfectly every time. So going with the gear and coin start, just keep in mind that if you're just left of center like you should be for most of these kills, Plague Knight will either jump twice to get into the corner or once to get into the corner. Most of the time, he'll jump twice to get into the corner. So you fire the gear, fire the coin, walk off the gear, and then as soon as you get up to Plague Knight, you're swinging at him and then immediately canceling that with a jump so that you can get a fast charge slash. Your focus is to reflect the coin back at Plague Knight and hopefully hit the potion. You don't always, but hopefully hitting the potion. Following him on this first jump, you'll want to get three swings on him, and then he'll either stop and throw a bomb, or he'll jump away from here. That's what we refer to as single and double, is whether or not he's stopping to throw a bomb. So he only jumped once, so that was double, then single. Provided that you're reflecting potions and opening the fight correctly, you should be able to actually just finish him off with three charge slashes at this point, before he gets a chance to get away. Uh, if he does get away, then he should be on such low health that a single hit will be able to kill him. Now, in this footage, you're going to see a double followed by a triple. The fight starts out the same with gear and then coin. Uh, swing into charge slash, one, two, three. But since Plague isn't stopping here, you need to recognize that he's moving, switch to propeller dagger, jump and dagger so that you don't bonk into the coin, because yes, you can do that, and chase him into the right side corner. The nice thing about this is that the coin is actually going to chase after him, essentially, and deal an extra hit. So this fight won't be as slow as it could have been. I did find, however, in some instances that the coin didn't actually end up going to the right side, so you may end up having to deal a little bit more damage to finish this fight off, but again, if you're well versed in quickly doing your charge slashes, you should be able to kill Plague on this side of the screen. For the last example I'm showing off will be the rare instances of a single jump. The single jump start means that Plague is going to immediately turn around and throw a bomb, so instead of doing your 1, 2, 3 on the way up, you're doing a charge slash on the first jump, landing, turning around, swinging, another charge slash, and you this is actually pretty tricky. 
continue trying to follow him into the corner and just keep an eye if he does stop and throw a bomb. Then make your way into the corner trying to reflect as many bombs as you can. And again, once you've broken the 4 HP threshold, he'll summon the room full of vets. Use that time to try and finish him off before he can get away. All that previous footage was from Applesauce, so here's an attempt of my own. I expect him to do two jumps to get into the corner. Try and push him under the 4 HP threshold right here, but I couldn't quite, so I follow him to the right corner and just finish him off with a couple more swings and reflects. Let's say you want a lot more easygoing of a fight. Orbs or spheres will supplement the damage in this fight, but the concept remains the same. Use the dagger to get to the corner, and then, again, in a very low percent style, deal as much damage to Plague as you can while attempting to reflect potions. The dagger in this case makes it a lot easier to catch up to him if he should jump away. Don't be afraid to use the occasional charge slash while you're waiting for a potion to come up so that you can reflect it and hit him at the same time. Boss Rush is by far one of the hardest sections of the game for Shovel Knight, so if you're going to learn this game, I highly recommend that you spend your time practicing this stage and this rush. Remember that if you're not playing on PC, you can just leave the checkpoint up and keep dying here repeatedly. Uh, but otherwise, if you are playing on PC, please make use of S-Trainer. It'll make your life a lot easier. Check the description for links to all of Applesauce's quick kills for Boss Rush, and next time we'll be finishing this tutorial series with the final stage in the battle with the Enchantress. Thanks for watching.